Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology. This is module eight, non-infectious disease and disorders. And in this particular video, number 20, we're gonna focus on visual disorders. So just as in the last video, we looked at the structure of the ear and some issues associated with hearing loss. In this particular one, we're gonna focus on the structures and functions in the eye and some of the uh, problems associated with visual disorders. So what we want you to be able to do is to identify the major structures in the eye, to explain the function of some of those important structures and then to discuss some of the causes of vision impairment. So once again, I've just put the um, diagram that I will use later on of the eye underneath here as we go through some of these key structures um, just to make sure that you're aware of them all. Um, one of the important components of this section, I think, is an eye dissection. You probably have already carried one out in um, the junior years, but important to go through all of these key structures to see if you can actually identify each of these when you're doing your dissections. Very, very important. So the first thing we need to talk about is the cornea, which is kind of continuous with the sclera, and it's part of the protective layer around the eye. But the difference between the sclera and the cornea, the main difference is the transparency and the fact that it's the first part of the eye that actually begins the process of refraction. So light is actually bent as it comes into the eye. And we think of primarily the lens being the structure in the eye that does that. And of course that is uh, the case, but as the light is passing through the cornea, through the aqueous humor, and then the vitreous humor, um, these are different liquids. Different liquids have different um, refractive indices. And so therefore the light is going to travel at slightly different speeds through each of these uh, different media. And that means that it is going to change its direction. So it's going to refract through each of these different components in the eye. And the idea is that they will uh, bring the light um, that is reflecting from whatever surfaces we're looking at um, to a focus right on the retina at the back of the eye. So important that you understand that that uh, covering, if you look at someone side on, you can actually see the little bulge at the front of their eye, and that's the cornea. And that's the first part of the uh, transition of light from air into the, uh, into the eye. I've talked about the sclera, very protective covering. If you're doing a dissection, that's the bit that's really hard to cut through when you're trying to uh, open the eye up. The front part is part of a choroid layer and the pupil is part of that too. And it's really just a hole uh, that allows light to pass through. So um, that, that hole can be regulated, or at least the size of that hole can be regulated by the iris, which is a muscular part of the choroid layer. And it regulates the size of the pupil in response to ambient light. So um, as the amount of light changes, and you might have done that um, activity, if you look at someone, um, if you look at someone's eyes and maybe the light's off in the room and then you turn it on or you, you get them to turn their head towards a window which, with sunlight coming through it, you can actually see that pupillary reflex. So the pupil will get very large uh, when, the, when there's only a small amount of light to try and let as much light in as possible. But if you get a lot of light, then that pupil closes very quickly. Um, in order to um, avoid too much light coming into the inner parts of the eye. Um, so the iris is a very important part of that process. The other important structures, uh, I've mentioned the lens. You, if you've done a dissection, uh, and if you do, it's very important that you can actually extract that lens. You need to be very careful, have a look at the, sh the size and the shape of the lens. The fact that it's also relatively flexible means that it can accommodate. And that process of accommodation is what allows us to change our vision um, from looking at objects very close to looking at objects in the distance. That difference between close vision and far vision um, is, a is accomplished through this process of accommodation. The retina obviously is that key area of the eye with all those important photoreceptor cells, cells that are going to be sensitive to light. And there are two main types. The two main types are the rods and the cones. And again, you're probably familiar with that. The C for cones, C for color. Uh, the cones are the ones that are associated with color vision, which means that the rods are more to do with um, low light, um, night vision, greys and blacks, 
and there's a lot more of them and they're distributed pretty much everywhere over the retina whereas the cones are restricted to the fovea and they are about high visual acuity so that's really um, nice clean crisp images and uh, we see three different types of those basically looking at red or sensitive if you like to wavelengths corresponding to red light green light and blue light and of course we see a range of different colors which is um, some of where that overlapping um, well, different wavelengths are going to stimulate maybe multiple of these different types of cones and then all that information has to go to the brain so it goes to the brain through the optic nerve that's going to link the um, signals that are coming uh, into the cells within the retina and take those to the brain. So here it is. Again, uh, as we did before with the ear, it's important to look at the fact now we have a different type of energy. We have light energy that's coming in. And what happens to this light energy? Well, we've said that there's going to be some levels of refraction. And what we ideally want is for the uh, f light that's coming through to come to a focus on the um, retina so that that should be coming right onto the actual retina surface itself if it's not doing that then that means that there's going to be some problem with us being able to have a clear image it may be a little blurry or fuzzy uh, and there's a couple of different types of visual disorders that are associated with sometimes the lens and sometimes some other components um, that we'll have a look at in just a few minutes. So you can see there are muscles that are going to change the shape of the lens. There are uh, muscles here too in the iris that are going to shape to change the size of the pupil. Um, there's also these different uh, liquids. Humor is a, a, a medical word for a fluid, basically. We call the fluid between the cornea and the lens aqueous humor because it looks like water. It's got that sort of colorless nature to it. Whereas the vitreous is kind of more glass-like. It's the black, uh, the darker color. And in fact, this area in here is all pretty dark. And that's partly uh, because you'll know too, if you've ever tried building structures um, like spectroscopes or things like that, you want to try and make them super light tight that is you don't want any light coming in from other areas you don't want it bouncing around too much you want to make sure that it's going exactly where you want it to go and it's just uh, being absorbed in any other areas where it's not required so that really dark part of the back of the eye is about trying to get all of that light to focus in exactly on the retina now it's uh, probably worth mentioning at this point too that um, the uh, fovea is a very important part that we, we've talked about. There's a blind spot which basically is a region that um, when the light falls on that we don't form images and you may have done exercises in the past to determine where your blind spot is. What we want you to do is just to be able to very generally identify how light changes as it comes into the eye. And if we can do that, then it means we're in a better position to be able to understand some of the disorders. Just a quick word about the rods and the cones. I don't know that you're going to need to know these in a huge amount of detail, but it's probably worth having a bit of a general idea about them. Remember, they're part of the nervous system, so as cells, they look a little more unusual. Um, but then if you think about nerve cells then or neurons, these are not unusual if you uh, think of them as uh, specialized types of neurons. And that's pretty much what they are. The important thing about them is that they contain pigments that are light sensitive. And um, in the rods, that will be rhodopsin, and in the cones, that will be various types of iodopsins that are going to be um, triggered by different wavelengths of light and maybe multiple uh, ones might be triggered by by different sorts of colors, which is why we don't just see blues, reds or greens. We see a mixture of those. I don't think it's kind of critical at this stage, except for the fact that these are specific types of sensory neurons. So they are going to be stimulated by something. In this case, it's going to be light that's going to be of a particular wavelength that's going to stimulate these. And they're going to transmit those uh, images through to um, the... Uh, optic nerve that's going to carry through the optic nerve that's going to carry those signals through to the brain where they're going to be processed. So then what are we talking about in terms of vision loss? Well we're talking about maybe four different types of things that you might get asked about. 
Um, there's obviously more things that can go wrong with eyes, um, but these are kind of the main ones and they give us a little bit of an idea about what sort of things can happen. So the two most common ones are what we've generally called short-sighted or long sight. Um, myopia is the term we use for short-sightedness and hyperopia for long-sightedness. And they sound like what they are. So short sight, you can see short distances, you can't see um, long distances. Um, long sightedness is things are out in the distance are in focus, but it's hard to focus on things close to you. Um, and this has got to do with uh, often accommodation, the way that the um, lens is changing or not changing um, its levels of flexibility. And this is why some of these problems actually do start to manifest themselves in, uh, in later years. As people age, the flexibility of their um, lenses starts to decrease. And so therefore they don't have quite the same ability to accommodate uh, as they did when they were younger. Um, sometimes it can be to do with the shape of the eyeball, um, eyeballs that are very long or eyeballs that are kind of short and, and fat, if you <laughs> like to think of that as a picture, um, can also change the way that the, or at least the position of the focus. So where that light is coming to a point where we want that to um, land directly on the retina, if it doesn't do that, if it's kind of going in front of the retina or behind the retina, you're not going to get a nice clear image. And, um, and that can be a problem associated with these two. Um, one other that involves the lens are cataracts, and sometimes you can see this as a cloudiness um, that appears on uh, just sort of sitting in behind the pupils, which is basically where you get this clumping of proteins in the lens, and that and can definitely result in blurred vision, fading of colours, um, sometimes even uh, double vision, poor night vision, those sorts of things. Uh, cataracts are... Um, things that we'll talk about a little bit later on. Don't want to talk about how they, how we deal with any of these at this stage because that's a, a topic for another video. And the other one's macular degeneration. And it's pr probably one of those ones that if you live long enough, you're going to start to see some degeneration in your macula. So there's, that's kind of a layer underneath the retinal cells. And what that means is that um, it's going to affect any images that fall, light that falls above that region of the macula. Um, means that you can't focus quite so well. So it does, again, have a, uh, an effect on reducing um, vision. So these are some of the different areas that we can look at in terms of vision loss. And as I said, we'll look at some of the ways that these can be treated in a future video. Thanks for watching.